For more than three and a half years, Perseverance has been exploring the interior of a large impact crater on Mars, which is unrecognizable from the ground. But now, exploration of the rim is showing possible signs of its violent origin. On this episode of Mars Guy, Cesaro Crater served as a container for water that flowed in through Neret Vivalis a few billion years ago, forming a lake and delta fan deposits that Perseverance ultimately would explore. This watery activity happened well after the crater itself formed in a cataclysmic impact event nearly 4 billion years ago. Long before craters were recognized on Mars, they were first observed on the Moon in the early 1600s by Galileo using his primitive telescope. But they were long thought to have a volcanic origin, and impact origin was not confirmed until the 20th century. Even the best preserved impact crater on Earth, in my home state of Arizona, was not proven to be the result of impact until 1963. Jezero Crater is nearly 50 times bigger and nearly 4 billion years older, which makes it hard to recognize as a crater from the ground. Here's Mars Guy for scale, viewed from the spot where Perseverance touched down on the crater floor. Thanks to its size and age, it's hard to recognize that you're in a crater because the distant eroded rim appears more like a mountain range and the filled-in floor looks like a desert plain. In this location two months ago, Perseverance began its slow climb up the crater rim. It passed familiar-looking rocks that are part of the widespread olivine and carbonate-bearing margin unit that was deposited well after the crater formed. The pile of cobbles and boulders with the purplish paint-like coating that are reported on in episode 184, resemble rocks seen elsewhere in the crater. Same with a boulder-covered knob less than 100 meters up slope. But last week, after a nice long drive of nearly 175 meters, Perseverance arrived in a location further up the rim with notably different-looking rocks, starting with this small outlier of a larger outcropping. Gone are the smooth, angular facets replaced by pockmarks and large voids. There's even a two-toned look with dark gray fragments or clasts in a whitish matrix. This somewhat resembles the bizarre-looking boulder observed back in May of this year, but this one has much more irregular surfaces, including the protruding gray clasts. Perseverance approached the larger mass of these rocks for a closer look, but then needed to reposition to find a rock suitable for investigation with the robotic arm-mounted instruments and maybe even a drilling operation. The look of the rocks here is notably different than in any previously observed on the mission. I think the appropriate geologic description is mangled. There's not a smooth face to be found. In this context, maybe they could even be described as grotesque. And given their location on the rim of a giant impact crater, a hit from a big chunk of space debris is a good guess for how they formed. The impact process is known to produce so much energy that the rocks on the receiving end are instantly pulverized and even melted. The stuff that falls back into the newly formed and evolving crater makes new rocks called impact breccia and impact melt as recognized in examples from Earth and its moon. Many have pieces of the different rock types that were present before the impact and reassembled into a new rock, a bit like aggregate in concrete. I'm hoping that Perseverance will be able to grind into the rock that it's begun to investigate. This could reveal the telltale texture of an impact-generated rock and help explain how these mangled rocks came to be.